everyone, this is your boy FKG401 here coming at you guys with another video. And before we talk about this huge matchup that's going to be on this weekend on CBS between the New England Patriots and the Kansas City Chiefs, this video today is really to bring in some normality, I'm sure, uh, with COVID-19, all of the stuff that has happened this week with the Tennessee Titans, and of course, right now, the nation being on pins and needles with President Trump being diagnosed with COVID-19. I want to put some positive vibes into uh, this YouTube video and really try to bring us into some sort of normality in these uh, tough times. But before we get into the video, I just want to wish uh, President Trump a uh, speedy recovery as he battles this horrific virus that has been a plague and has killed over 200,000 people this year. So, looking at this game right now, um, New England at Kansas City, we all know this is going to be CBS's game of the week. And the spread has Kansas City as a seven-point favorite. We know that Kansas City uh, beat New England last year. And as always, I want to get into uh, the three main storylines when it comes to this game. Uh, first and foremost, I want to talk about the defense for the Patriots. Now, can the Patriots bring enough pressure in there with four rushers? Now, the one thing that the Chiefs have made clear over their last two seasons is that you cannot beat them without generating a pass rush. And that's what we saw this past Monday on Monday Night Football. But also, you can't sell out and leave their skill position players in man coverage. Essentially, unless you can generate pressure with just four rushers, Patrick Mahomes is just too good. And his receivers are too fast to not find an open man. And, you know, speaking about that uh, Monday Night Football game, talking about the Ravens, they blitzed 45% of downs. And they only generated two pressures. Now, Mahomes really got to the Ravens' defense. He completed 15 of 19 passes for 191 yards and three touchdowns on such plays. And we know that New England doesn't have, you know, Dante Hightower. And I sound like a broken rep because every time I talk about this Patriots team, I'm always talking about the fact that we don't have, you know, the defensive players that we had last year, either lost through free agency, or the fact that, hey, we're not playing during a pandemic. And you look at the Patriots. They have struggled to generate much pressure this season. You know, a 5.9% adjusted sack rate ranks 18th in the NFL after they ranked 6th at an 8.1% clip last season. Now, Bill Belichick did have success running unique uh, read cover zero blitzes last season, but, you know, like I said, those players either going through free agency, like players like Jamie Collins or Kyle Van Noy, Dante Hightower, um, with the COVID situation, if they can't, they're going to get burned in a lot of man coverage. Now, the second storyline in this game to watch is going to be the turnover battle. New England was able to be so aggressive on defense last season because of how talented their secondary is and was. You got Stephen Gilmore. He is really the player for a shutdown corner in today's game. And I will say that that secondary in New England is deep because you got the McCordy twins. You got Adrian Phillips. You got J.C. Jackson. And... The 25 turnovers that they had last season were five more than any other team in the NFL. And their 36 turnover force were the most since the 2015 Carolina Panthers. Now, the team once again paces the league with seven turnovers thus far. And only the Colts, by the way, six, have more than their four interceptions. Now, this is going to be the toughest matchup for the secondary, because 
the Chiefs only have one turnover all season. And that was on a fumble by uh, Darren Williams. Now, Patrick Mahomes, this is going to be the fourth time that he faces the Patriots. Now, remember that AFC Championship game two seasons ago. Uh, he had a memorable performance. Now, he has thrown three interceptions against the Patriots. But he's also tallied eight touchdowns in those games. And like I said, they did beat the Patriots last season. And by the way, that was a 23-16 win at Gillette Stadium. So if the Chiefs can hold themselves to just one turnover... They're going to be tough to beat at Arrowhead Stadium. Let me talk about Cam Newton. Because I know last week I talked about how Cam Newton, uh, his performance, it was a different performance than what we saw in week two, than what we saw in week three. And you, you know the thing, I say this about Cam Newton. Cam Newton has really surprised us. And it's just given him this renewed aura, so to say. And the team really didn't let him loose in weeks one and three. That's something that I saw because he only finished with 47 combined passes attempts. Now, when the Patriots did let him loose, that was... Uh, in that game against Seattle, where he had 396 yards and was just one yard short of that game, of in that game in Seattle, where um, he could have gotten a touchdown and could have beaten the Seahawks on the road. But New England's going to need that Cam Newton in week two because you know that the Patriots' defense. Ain't going to do squat against Patrick Mahomes. Now, New England, I know they don't have any big name weapons for Cam Newton to use. I know they got a Julian Edelman, sure. There are rumors going around that the Patriots are trying to get Odell Beckham Jr., um, Julio Jones. That's something that I heard, but I'm kind of using that as a fake news story. But... So far, he's made good use of Rex Burkhead out of the backfield. And the guy's got more arm strength than Tom Brady. But speaking of Julian Edelman, he's also allowed Edelman to become a downfield weapon as a slot receiver. 17.3 uh, yards per carry is by far a career high. And even Keneal Harry, um, he looks alive. 15 receptions, 145 yards. After the rookie season where he just freaking was, um, just got awful. And running back James White, uh, who is a reliable target out of the backfield, um, he could actually return for this game uh, because we know about the situation that happened with his father, his parents. You know, his father passed away. Uh, the mother was injured. But here's the thing about the Kansas City Chiefs. They have played well to this point, especially their secondary. And their fourth and pass defense and completely what they did last week was shut Lamar Jackson down. 97 passing yards. And even Deshaun Watson only threw 253 yards. But Cam Newton, I will say this, he's talented enough to pick apart this team, but... What does he have to do? He has to pass with the volume and efficiency that the team hasn't even asked thus far. So my prediction for this game is their defense showed on Monday night that they are the premier team. Without a question, I will say it. Kansas City is always going to be a favorite to be a Super Bowl threat. As long as they got Patrick Mahomes. As long as they got that defense. Um, in Kansas City. But. 
as always, me living in New England, don't sleep on this Patriots team. Because Josh McDaniels, what does he do on offense? He has this renewed offense and he puts more options for this Patriots offense. This is one of the few offenses that can keep up with the Chiefs' high-flying attack. Um, there is a path to victory for the Patriots. I wouldn't be shocked if the Patriots beat the Chiefs. What do the Patriots need to do to beat the Chiefs? It's that simple. They need to read their blitzes. They need to force a turnover or two. I mean, there's a lot of variables that go into this game. And you're going up against the best team on the road. Sure. They don't have the advantage because that we're in this pandemic. They don't have, you know, a sold-out Arrowhead Stadium. They don't. So, you, I know you're going to have fans there, this and that, but it's not going to be the same as what we saw last season with Chiefs home games where it's the loudest stadium in the NFL. No. You can only have this much capacity uh, for a game. I want to go with the Patriots in this game. I really do. But Kansas City, man, they've been playing so freaking great. I got to give them this game here. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. To me, I don't think Kansas City is going to cover the spread. Uh, this is going to be a very good football game. I got the Chiefs winning this game 31-27. to This is going to be a very good game to watch. Um... And it's just going to continue to prove that, hey, Cam Newton can still hang. And if he has a very good performance, of course, you know, you're going to read in The Athletic. You're going to read in the papers here in New England that this guy should be extended. So I will talk about this game. I, I hope I can talk about this game on Sunday. So what are your thoughts on this? Put it in the comment section below. I might get into the Dallas Cowboys tomorrow because uh, they play against the Cleveland Browns. If not, I'm going to do some kind of rarity here. I'm going to be talking about NXT TakeOver 31. Sorry about the sirens. I will give you my preview and predictions for that NXT show. Until then, I am out. Peace.